हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सुनील कुमार पीजीटी कॉमर्स केंद्रीय विद्यालय सेक्रेट आर के पुरम लेट मी वेलकम यू इन आर अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ बिजनेस स्टडीज क्लास ट्वेल्थ इन आर प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द फीचर्स ऑफ बिजनेस एनवायरनमेंट एंड इट्स इंपॉर्टेंस एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर दैट इज द इकोनॉमिक एनवायरनमेंट ऑफ आर कंट्री सिंस इंडिपेंडेंस एट द टाइम ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस our country was not in full command as far as financial resources and economic resources are concerned but there has been significant changes taking place in the environment of india since independence the main features at the time of independence were we were depending more on agriculture sector so that shows the dominance of agriculture sector around 75% people were involved in agricultural employment 85% people were living in villages we had a very bad production system the technology was obsolete or outdated public health system was derailed completely more communicable diseases were available that time the government has taken so many steps introduction of five year planning started because of that only and in its process the government has ensured that there should take place rapid development there should take place a proper communication system there should take place proper health system and to ensure that the government has given more role to the public sector and the private sector was completely avoided because of that in the year 1991 the government was almost on the threshold of becoming insolvent and students in the year 1991 there were so many forces which were forcing the country to introduce a new industrial policy so as to remove all the negativity available in our indian economy the very first thing which forced the government to introduce a new industrial policy was negative agricultural growth the second one was the inflation rate rose to 13 to 14% internal debt rose to 50% of gdp fiscal deficit reached around 7% of gdp fall in the foreign exchange reserves negative balance of payment india was on the threshold of becoming defaulter as a result state bank of india and reserve bank of india sold gold in the internal and the external market shows that government was in intense pressure to introduce a new industrial policy and in the year 1991 on 24 july the new industrial policy was announced under the finance ministry of dr manmohan singh under the prime ministership of mr pv narsimha rao in that industrial policy dr manmohan singh has opened the doors of indian economy for all the people in the world in 1977 as i mentioned earlier janta party asked the all the foreign companies to leave india but now in 1991 because our country was suffering from negative balance of payment and the foreign exchange of the country was reducing year day after day so it was imperative for the government to introduce such a policy in which the invitation will be given to all the companies of the world to come in india install their business develop the infrastructure and do the business and get amount of profits so the main features of new industrial policy are as follows the very first feature of new industrial policy was delicensing before 1991 all the business organizations need to get license from the government so there was unnecessary pressure on all the business organization to get the license from the public but in the year 1991 a new industrial policy delicensing took place and the government reserved only 6 products in which the licensing was required and from all the remaining ones it was taken off the second feature was more importance to private sector as i mentioned earlier since independence till 1991 more emphasis was given to the public sector to develop the infrastructure in the country public sector was doing a lot but still it was not sufficient so government realizes that without taking public sector together 
it won't be able to survive in the market. It won't be able to achieve the targets of taking India to new heights. So it was decided that the private sector should be given due importance and it was given a new industrial policy 1991. The third feature of new industrial policy was disinvestment. Earlier, the government was keeping investment only in the public sector. And now the government is thinking of public sector. So it starts selling a part of the public sector to the private sector so that the financial resources, the natural resources of the public sector and professional efficiency of the private sector should come together, which will certainly help in giving more pro better products and giving in better services to all the people of the country. The next feature of our new industrial policy is liberalization of foreign policy. That is, the foreign equity limit raised to 100%. Earlier, the foreign companies were not allowed to come in India. But in new industrial policy 1991, they are not only allowed to come in India to do the business, but now 100% equity is allowed in the various companies which are operating already in our country, India. The next feature is liberalization in technical area. Earlier, when a company is in need of high-tech machinery, that is, the capital goods, the company has to ask the government to import it from some country. Only after getting the approval from the government, the company can buy the capital goods. But in new industrial policy, the import of capital goods got automatic approval. Like, if a company thinks it is imperative, it is needed that the company should go for the high-tech machine, then without asking the government, now the company can buy that particular machinery from a foreign country very, very easily without asking the government. It means automatic approval was given by the government to the company to import such capital goods. The next feature of new industrial policy is benefit to small industries. As I mentioned earlier, 85% of the people of our country were living in villages. They were working in the agricultural sector, but it was providing them employment only for six or seven months. For the rest of five months, they were getting idle. So the need was felt that why shouldn't the country develop the infrastructure for the small scale sector so that by providing them the goods, by providing them the financial resources, the employment will be generated within the villages and the migration of the people from the villages to the urban areas can be stopped. And these were the major features of new industrial policy. Students, after discussing the features of new industrial policy, you must have understood that more emphasis was given on liberalization, privatization, and globalization. So let me discuss now liberalization. Liberalization refers to giving more liberty to business organization by removing unnecessary restrictions in the form of licensing, quota, fixing prices, etc. In new industrial policy, following measures were adopted. Number one, abolition of licensing except in few areas. As I mentioned earlier, there were six areas which were left out from the delicensing. The second one was freedom in fixing prices. Earlier, the companies were not given the liberty to fix the price of their products. But now, in new industrial policy, they were given the liberty that because of the demand and supply forces, they can fix the price of their own product. The next reform took place in new industrial policy was the liberalization in import and exports. The automatic approval is given to all the industries which are in need of high-tech machines from the foreign countries. The next reform was no restriction on expansion and contraction of the business. Earlier, if the organization wants to increase the business, they were not allowed. If they would like to decrease the business, they were not allowed. But after the introduction of industrial policy in 1991, they were given full liberty that if they would like to increase the size of their business easily by reinvesting their profits, they can increase the size. And if they feel like it's betterment for the business to decrease the business operations, so they can decrease. So it means the full liberty was given to the business organization for the expansion and contraction of the business. The next reform was freedom in movement of goods and services. Earlier it wasn't like this, but in new industrial policy, the free movement of goods and services was provided. Students, the second most important feature of new industrial policy is 
privatization. You must be thinking what is privatization? It means reducing the role of the public sector and giving more importance to private sector. To implement privatization, government took the following measures. Disinvestment of public sector. As I mentioned earlier in Bhel, that is Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited and in so many other public sector organizations, disinvestment took place. The public sector was given an opportunity to the private sector to come join hands with the public sector and operate in the betterment of the people of the country. The second reform was establishment of BIFR, that is Board of Industries Financial Reconstruction. When in 1991, multinational companies were given an invitation to come in our country, India, the competition was raised to the maximum level. And it was almost impossible for the domestic com companies to survive in the market because the size of the multinational companies were huge. They were having huge financial resources. The size of the business operations was enlarged. As a result, the cost per unit was very less. But in our country, India, the domestic companies they were not having that much financial resources. Their economies of scale was not as large as of multinational companies. So it was almost impossible for them to compete with the multinational companies. As a result, they start getting collaboration from the foreign companies so that they can give tough competition to the multinational companies. And if the companies were getting sick, it means they are producing losses year after year. Then this board for reconstruction was developed which will be giving money, finance required to the sick industry so that the sick industries can be converted into profit making industries. The next reform took place in privatization was dilution of the stake of the government. It means the selling off the part of the public sector to the private sector that we have discussed already in this particular chapter. So students, now in this episode we have discussed the economic environment of the country since independence reforms taken by the government to curb with all the challenges which were put forward towards the Indian economy, economic environment of the country in the year 1991, and the crisis factors in the year 1991, features of new industrial policy, introduction of globalization, privatization, and liberalization. And you have understood now the meaning of these three and the importance of these three in the present context. Thank you.